Ninja reflexes. Oh yeah. Did you know the older diesel tractors have their own built-in fidget spinners? They do. But they call them the transfer pump and the injector pump. So I'm going to explain how this works and uh, give you a little background and we're going to put this one back together. So this is a distributor pump assembly. It's a CAV. CAV stands for Charles Anthony Vandervel. He's the guy who started the company uh, that got this folks going and then Lucas bought him out and now it's installed in the Perkins telehandler. This is a CAV DPA and for those of you that don't know it's basically a diesel injection pump. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put this together and just explain it as I go. Uh, this is where all the pumping happens. This is actually in the back end. This is where the lines come out to go to the injectors. This goes to a four cylinder and you can tell because of a couple of things. It's got four output lines and then it's also got a cam with four bumps in it. So this has a couple of extra things that a lot of the other pumps don't have. It's the uh, timing advance. If you look at the bottom you can see there's a bolt there. So the springs on this side where this bolt is or plug more like and it adjusts the timing with that based on the pressure. So the pressure throughout the pump is going to be dictated by engine RPMs and it's going to be dictated by this transfer pump on the back end here. The transfer pump has two blades in it that go in the back. One's put in this way and the other one's put in the other way. And then there's a liner for it. The liners you got to watch out because if it has one of these on it, it's going to also have a corresponding cutout. So I bought one and I didn't pay attention to that. I didn't know any better because I've never done one like this before. I put this in there and guess what? I didn't get any pressure at all. This hole that you would normally have here was totally plugged off. It didn't have any passage at all because everything goes out through this and goes past this. This actually sucks back. It pulls back and allows the fuel to get by when it has a 12 volt and a ground signal. You see how that pulls back and allows the fuel to go around it. Without that you don't get any fuel flow at all and that's where I was at. Couldn't get it to prime, couldn't get it to do anything at all. So let that be a lesson to me. So I can see that my uh, veins are this way so I'll turn this this way. You should put the liner on first before these paddles. In fact let's just do that real quick. You don't want to mess around. So this drops in first. So that's how that works and then there's an o-ring that's kind of flat. It's mostly like a oil filter ring that fits on the back of there and then this regulator end plate goes on the end here. It's got a little tit right there that corresponds to this. So when they line up together it's like that. And then this has a whole bunch of different parts in it. I'll just show a quick time lapse of how this goes together. So this regulates and does a couple of different things. There's a small piston in the bottom of it that switches it between priming mode and another mode. So this is a soft metal and this is a hard metal insert. I actually switched to this from the original one because the original one had a bunch of wear swirl marks there. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put this all back together. Uh, but before I do, I wanted to do a little demonstration. I built a little jig out of uh, straws in these uh, spray nozzles. I was just going to show you. I marked this one with a blue pen on this side. So whenever this blue pen lines up with one of these, it'll inject out that side. Let's go ahead and try this out, see if I can get it to work on camera. Safety glasses on. If it's lined up on W, it should spray out on U. Not me, on you. You can see one of the plungers is pushed through the other side. They're super, super precise fit. I'm going to aim it this way so you all can see it. There you go. Uh, but basically as this rotates around, these uh, plungers are tapered a little bit. And the pump on this side, the transfer pump, sends in fuel through a little hole that's down through there. The one that I was squirting with this uh, little nozzle. And that fuel separates these. It pushes them out and then it rotates and gets to the cam and then the cam pushes on the roller bearings that are in the end of this and then those are to the shoe. You can see the little mark right there where it goes to the plunger 
and it pushes them together. So this pump on the back side pumps from 25 psi to 125 psi depending on RPMs. Pushes the plungers apart and then they rotate to the cam to where the bumps are. So they get pushed apart here and then squished together and then apart and together and so on and so forth. And this distributes fuel pressure to the injectors going around and around. On the one hand, these pumps are pretty simple and on the other, they're kind of complicated. So I've decided instead of having it be long videos, like an hour long of instruction, I was just going to break it up into some different concepts to make it easier to digest and easier to refer back to certain parts. So this is the end of part one. Be sure to subscribe and click the little bell so you won't miss the other parts that are coming up. We're going to talk about the flyweights, governors, uh, inlets and outlets, and all the different things, including the kill rod. You don't want to miss out on the kill rod. So uh, be sure to stay tuned. You can click on these end cards and it'll get you to the other videos too. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you on the next one.